I'm happy to be here at Euro PCR meeting 2016 with uh, two of my friends and colleagues, uh, Professor Felix Mafut, who is uh, working as an interventional cardiologist, uh, specialized in hypertension, heart failure, and neuromodulation at the uh, University of Hamburg, Saarland, in Germany. Hello. And uh, hello, Felix. And uh, Professor Zufis, who is working in uh, Greece, also an interventional cardiologist and uh, specialized or interested in the field of hypertension. So this uh, afternoon we'll focus on uh, hypertension and uh, I will directly start with my first question, uh, Professor Mafut. What are your thoughts about uh, this year, 2015? It was a tremendous year in the field of hypertension. What type of lessons have you learned uh, after all these trials published in the recent months? I think we have to comment on uh, SPRINT, uh, a recent trial that has been published in the New England Journal of Medicine actually comparing two treatment strategies in hypertension, high-risk hypertensive individuals, almost 9,000 patients have been included in that trial, and they compared the lower blood pressure target of 120 to 135 actually, and they identified, and the study has been um, stopped by the DSMB actually, because the treatment, of, treatment strategy of bringing patients to a blood pressure of 120 was superior in reducing morbidity and mortality in these hypertensive patients at risk. So indeed, we have to discuss whether or not guidelines might change. So um, it could well be that the guidelines committee will uh, change uh, the blood pressure target for patients with hypertension at risk. We also learned, and this is another trial that has been presented at ESC last year and uh, published in The Lancet, a trial that investigated fourth-line treatment strategies in so-called resistant hypertensive patients, uh, comparing beta blockers versus alpha blocker versus aldosterone antagonists in patients with resistant hypertension. And they identified that patients that have been treated with aldosterone antagonists were those responding in terms of blood pressure lowering um, much more than patients receiving the other agents. So it appears to be that aldosterone antagonists are the primary choice as first as fourth line therapy in patients still uncontrolled under treatment with three antihypertensive agents. So these two studies I think are very important in the field of hypertension and have been published in 2016, 2015 and 2016 actually. Okay, thank you. That's uh, really important I think and uh, so uh, as an interventional cardiologist uh, knowing all these uh, new information in the field of hypertension uh, what are your landmark trials or information you want to share with us about uh, where do we stand with renal denervation in 2015? Actually, I will comment on three uh, points. First, we have the publication of the randomized control trial at the Dener, which was positive for renal denervation. Second, we have an uh, important sub-analysis of HTN3, which contribute uh, to understand better the factors that influence, that uh, affect the huge variability for blood pressure response post renal denervation. According to this sample analysis, we know that in complete denervation, uh, the selection of office blood pressure as an end point instead of ambulatory blood pressure. Also, then uh, the poor adherence to medication, as well as the appropriate population as may not in uh, represented by the those patients with severe resistant hypertension explain at least partially the failure in the efficacy outcome in the HTN3 arm. And the second point I would like to comment uh, refers to uh, the improvement of our knowledge about the distribution, the location of the renal fibers. A complete set of um, preclinical and clinical studies provide evidence about the location and the distribution of the fibers. We have now to ablate distally in order to be able to disrupt more fibers in order to have a complete denervation to achieve uh, better uh, reduction in the sympathetic activity to which will lead in a better blood pressure control. I think by this uh, knowledge we can uh, move on and uh, to design better the future studies. So maybe we, ha we should have a kind of glimpse into the future. Uh, we have learned from uh, randomized clinical trial, drugs trial. We have learned from preclinical data and clinical data in the field of renal denervation. So, uh, Professor Mafut, could you maybe comment about what's going on in the field? Are we taking into account all these new data and how 
uh, can we treat better our patient and maybe by including them in trials. Costas already mentioned the potential confounding factors, so medication, patient population and the procedure itself. And I think, you know, we have five trials ongoing now, so trials, international multicenter trials, almost all of them are being um, conducted and are including actually patients at the moment. So, um, you know, we are, we are addressing these confounding factors in the ongoing studies. We will have studies dedicated to patients with mild hypertension, the, the so-called off or solo hypertension trials where patients without any medication will be included and denervated, CHAMP controlled design and all these studies. And we will have an on or trio cohort or however you want to name it, patients on a triple fixed combination uh, will be included in these studies to understand and to assess, investigate the impact of concomitant medication in patients undergoing renal denervation, sham controlled, um, three months uh, um, primary endpoint, two to three months primary endpoint in these trials. And these studies that are ongoing will help us to further understand the true effect of renal denervation and the potential impact of renal denervation as a treatment option in hypertensive patients. Good. So maybe for the audience, just to wrap up what is my conclusion, personal conclusion from your explanation. First, uh, in the field of hypertension, the lower is the better, definitely, and you have to intensify the treatment of your patient uh, to bring them probably to a lower threshold. And the help of uh, sometimes mineraloreceptor antagonists uh, could be the drug of choice when you are facing patients with resistant hypertension. Second, as uh, Professor Tsouf has pointed out, I think we have learned a lot in the field of renal denervation about the methodology of trials, about the anatomy of the trials, but also about uh, the need to better assess uh, the quality of management of these hypertensive patients. And finally, I think uh, Professor Mahfoud shared with us the, the kind of view in the future about all these trials uh, starting or going on in the field of renal denervation, uh, showing that maybe there is a restart or a rebirth of this approach. So thank you, uh, Felix Mahfoud. Thank you, Costas Tufis, for this thank nice you. session. Thank you, Arthur.